integrated circuits is what we have to start discussing from today onward. Let us uh, first consider the most important basic building block in analog ICs. I do not think there is any other uh, basic building block uh, in discrete circuits which can be compared to this particular basic building block. That is the current mirror. Let us see what this is. The idea is very simple. As uh, the name itself indicates, mirror is something that reflects the image exactly in an identical fashion, replica of the original uh, stuff, whatever it is. In this case, it is a current mirror. It should exactly reproduce the current that is existing originally. So, what is it? How is it made? We have already seen that a transistor connected as a diode with base and collector shorted is the most popular trans uh, diode configuration in integrated circuits. Why? Primarily because we have this transistor, even though acting as a diode for the external world, within itself it is still acting as a transistor and transistor action still takes place. What is it? IC is equal to alpha times IE. Still is perfectly valid because collector base junction has zero bias and base emitter junction can be forward bias. So, transistor action takes place in this block, but for the outside world it is a two terminal device acting as a diode. So, how do we fix the current in this? One way is to fix the current in this by applying a voltage across this. But we will not know what exactly the current is unless we know something about the transistor characteristics. What is that? I E is equal to I E naught exponent V B E by V T approximately. So, when I have V B E as a certain value, I know there will be certain current I E through this. But this is a very, very sensitive thing. If VBE changes very slightly, IE will change enormously because of the exponential relationship. So, this way of fixing the current of the diode is not a stable way of biasing the diode. The best way of biasing the diode is to force the current into it. How do I force the current? I can forward bias the diode by forcing a current into it by applying a voltage, let us say. V and a resistance R. So, now the current in the circuit is going to be V minus V B E divided by R. This is the current through the diode. This current is forced into it. Now, V B E should so adjust itself that this current is permitted to flow through the diode. What does it mean? This is I E. This is, what is this current? Alpha times I E. Okay. What is this current then? If this is I E and this is alpha times I E, by Kirchhoff's law, this is going to be 1 minus alpha times I E. Effectively, we have this as still equal to I E. So, this current is nothing but I E. So, we are forcing an emitter current of magnitude equal to V minus V B E by R. Automatically transistor action takes place and the base current required for sustaining that collector current is going to be flowing through this. Is this clear? This is the way to force through the diode a current of required magnitude V minus V B by R. If V B is very small compared to V, we know that this is very nearly equal to V by R, which I can determine according to my choice, selecting V and R properly. So, if V is let us say 10 volts and R is 1 K, we have a current of 
10 milliampere flowing through this. So, I can clearly know that through the diode there is 10 milliampere current flowing through. Now, how do we use this information? In an integrated circuit, if base to emitter voltage of this transistor is forced by this current, then automatically what happens? Base to emitter voltage of this can be sustained to be the same for this transistor as well. And then what will be the current in this? Current in this is going to be alpha times I e. Is this clear? Automatically. This is going to be always the case. This is what is called mirroring the current. This is the mirror effect. Whatever is flowing through this diode is mirrored through the transistor now, because collector you can connect it anywhere you please, okay. as long as collector base junction is reverse biased. As long as collector base junction is reverse biased, this current is going to be sustained in this. Okay. This kind of property is a unique property which is exploited universally in analog IC design. What is this property? I know that this particular transistor is connected as a diode. What does it mean? When you connect a transistor as a diode, you are giving feedback. Okay. It is a three terminal device. The co collector current is fed back to the input. Okay. Collector current is fed back to the input. Input current minus the collector current is now going to be the new input current to the transistor. And from here to here, there is a current gain of beta. So, this is a current amplifier with full current feedback. And what is the gain of the uh, current gain of the uh, current amplifier? Beta. So, if there is full current feedback, what will be the effective gain of such a current follower? Beta by beta plus 1. When there is a voltage feedback, in a uh, amplifier with voltage gain of A and we give full voltage feedback, we get a voltage gain of A by 1 plus A. So, in this case it is going to be beta by 1 plus beta which is nothing but alpha, that is what it is. Okay. So, this is really a diode which is treated as a transistor in a feedback mode. Okay. So, this is because of the negative feedback that the current in the circuit is getting adjusted automatic output current is going to be adjusted automatically exactly equal to the input current alpha being close to 1. So, this is a feedback situation. Now, this feedback information okay, is being utilized to reflect the same current in other transistors. Let us therefore, please make a note of this fact that the property that we are trying to utilize is make the master learn the technique through whatever means feedback or something and make the slaves repeat the same thing that the master does. Okay. This is this theory we can term as follow the master, right? follow the master. This principle is used in many other IC designs, simply by making use of the identical property of the transistor. So, this current mirror principle is something unique to IC design. Now, once I do this connection, please note that what will be the current in this now? This is alpha i, so this will be this is i e, this is also 1 minus alpha times i. Okay. So, if I connect one more transistor, that will also require a drive of 1 minus alpha times i e. Suppose I connect n transistors, the base currents of all these n transistors will have to be n times 
1 minus alpha times i getting accumulated and that current has to be given by the input current. Is this clear? So, what happens in such a situation? V minus V B E by R earlier was okay, simply equal to okay, simply equal to I E. Now, it is no longer that okay, because this current has to supply not only this alpha I E which is the major portion alpha I E earlier plus 1 minus alpha times I E which was really I E. Right? Now, it is 1 minus alpha times I E into n plus 1. Right? If there are n such stages. Is it clear now? That means, can we use this principle to arbitrarily reflect the same current in all the n transistors is another question. How many transistors can I keep on attaching to this so called reference which has been generated by pumping in a current of V minus V gamma by R. Okay. How many such current sources can I generate? The, all the current sources will now have the same current there is no doubt about it, but will it be the same as what I pump into the original diode? That particular part of it is going to depend upon what? Here you can see this is going to be alpha times I E okay, plus 1 minus alpha is actually what? I E to n plus 1 okay, divided by what is 1 minus alpha? Hmm? Bit 1 by 1 plus beta. Okay. So, actually speaking, we want this particular thing to be negligible. right? It is going to be negligible only when n is very small compared to beta. So, n should be much less than beta. Typically, beta of IC transistors is going to be around 200 or so. Right? So, typically the number of such current sources that you can get out of a single voltage reference will be of the order of 20 or so without any problem. That means, you can use each one of these current sources anywhere you want in any portion of your circuit later to be designed. That means, using a single resistor, I am able to simulate n number of current sources. So, this is a powerful technique for biasing transistors within an integrated circuit. Okay. Apart from this, the same current sources or sinks can also be used as load resistances, high valued load resistances. So, this kind of technique of current mirror is used both for biasing an amplifier stage okay, as well as let us say dynamic AC resistors of high value. These are the two purposes for which these current mirrors are used in most of the integrated circuit. This same concept is valid even if the transistors used are PNP instead of NPN. When you use PNP trans transistors for this purpose, okay, then you are simulating what are called as current sources. These are called current sinks. So, these are generated by 
NPN transistors, whereas current sources can be generated by PNP transistors. That the error obviously you can see now, error in the current depends upon the magnitude of n compared to magnitude of beta. We have already told you in all our earlier lecture in the introductory lecture that beta of an NPN transistor if it is of the order of 200 or so, beta of a PNP transistor is going to be 10 or so, right? 10 or 20. So, if you use a PNP transistor, the number of such current sources that you could generate will become smaller. So, is there a way of improving the uh, current source? Okay? First improvement that you desire is that this current reflected should be exactly same as the current that is flowing through this resistor. The error should be as small as possible or the current gain factor should be close to 1. That is one requirement. Another requirement of such current sources is that the output impedance seen from here. What is the impedance seen from here for this current source? You are looking at the current source from the collector, emitter is grounded. So, what is the output impedance of such a structure? 1 over HOE. Right? So, the output impedance seen from, because it is emitter grounded. Okay? So, when the emitter is grounded, the output impedance is typically of the order of 1 over HOE, which is of the order of hundreds of kilo ohms or even mega ohm. In IC transistors, it may reach of the order of 1 mega ohm or so. If you want better output impedance than that, you have to also adopt some modification for this current mirror. Okay. So, we will uh, now discuss about what are the other ways of obtaining current mirror with better performance than what is presently given to you. Okay. So far, we have been discussing about the simple current mirror. Now, let us see how to modify this current mirror, so that its performance parameters associated with this current mirror will be that the current source should have high output impedance and the current reflected should be exact replica of the current, which is the reference current that is pumped into the diode. These are the two requirements, how to achieve this. Let us see first a uh, very simple technique. One way is the usual negative feedback technique. All of you know that when you want to improve uh, the performance of a structure in terms of reaching its ideality, if it is a current source, it should become an ideal current source. What does it mean? By giving proper negative feedback, I can make the original current source become a better current source. And therefore, uh, let us see how a negative feedback concept can be utilized in making the particular current source better current source than original. What is the kind of feedback that we have to give in order to make this uh, output current become a better current source? What kind of feedback? First of all, we want the current to be okay, same in all. That is easily achieved. Current is same in all because Vb will be the same for all. Current is the same. The reference current should be the same as the current reflected. That is what we have to have. The second one is that the output current, okay, when we are connecting it to something, the output current source should act as a true current source. What does it mean? Its output impedance should be infinity. So, these are the two requirements. That means, the, if you vary the voltage between collector and emitter, the output current should not change. So, this is the second requirement. How do we do this? 
obviously by using negative feedback. What kind of negative feedback should we adopt in order to make a current source a better current source? That is my question, undergraduates. Huh? Current feedback. Now, whether it is shunt or series of is of no consequence because we are not bothered about what happens at the input. Is it clear? It is current shunt or current series. It could be current feedback. So, we have to select the output current and feed it back as a current or select the output current and feed it back as a voltage. These are the two techniques that can be made use of in order to improve the output impedance of a current source. So, how do we do it? First, let us see. This is the output current. This is going to be the output current. Do we have something which tells us that the current in the output is same as current here? The emitter current is very nearly same as output current. So, I can sense the current here. How do I sense the current here? I now connect here a diode because we know that the diode now will have the current which is the same as the output current, a transit current. And I want to generate a current that can be fed back. How do I do it? Use a current mirror. It is very simple. That means, the same idea that I have been using now can be used in the reverse that if I now use this kind of structure, this current which is same as the output current very nearly is getting reflected at this point. And what do I do? I have to feed it back to the input. So, that is it that I feeding back a current is very easy that that the Kirchhoff's law itself does it right because this was the original input. Okay. This input was going into the base. Now, the fed back current is going to be opposing the original input current and the difference in current goes into the base. So, this is the current that is current which is sensed is fed back as current. Okay. This is a famous current mirror called Wilson current mirror due to Wilson. Obviously, now you can see that in order to improve the performance of the current mirror, I have used in place of original two transistors, okay, I have used three transistors. Okay. Now, base two collector voltage is made 0 here, this has V gamma here. So, what is the reverse bias voltage of this transistor? that is V gamma because this this is V gamma. Okay, that is V gamma here and therefore, this potential and this potential the difference is V gamma, but in order to reflect the current better, okay, what does it mean? In order to prevent early effect from making the current different, making the current reflected different here. I should make the collector base potential of that transistor also equal to what? This collector base potential is 0. So, this collector base potential also must be maintained at 0 if it is possible. How do I do it? There is a current going into this. So, if I put a diode here, that is it. So, I simply put a diode here, which is nothing but again a transistor connected as a diode do you see the difference now this is simply a diode brought in so as to make this current get reflected here more exactly otherwise what would have happened this collector base potential of this would have been different from the collector base potential of this and there will be some difference in current So, this four transistor configuration is even better than the earlier thing. So, obviously, what will be the output impedance now? It should go towards its ideal value. The best that the trans single transistor can give as an output impedance corresponds to 
in the common emitter it is 1 over HOE, what is the configuration in which the output impedance is the highest single transistor configuration? Common base, it will go towards common base output emission which is 1 over HOB. Right? Now, this I am going to give it as a homework problem to you, show that the output impedance of this is going towards what 1 over HOB from 1 over HOE because of this feedback this is what happens. So, now you have improved the output impedance by an order of how much what is the difference between 1 over HOB and 1 over HOE beta plus 1. So, the uh, order of improvement in output impedance is of the order of beta 200 times or so. Is it clear? So, this is commonly used wherever you think the output impedance of the current mirror is what matters in the performance of a structure amplifier or otherwise. So, Wilson current mirror is used where output impedance of a current source has to be very high. Okay. This is one technique. Another technique is the other kind of feedback. Also please show that the first is to show that the output impedance is 1 over HOB. Another thing is what, what did I say? Because of negative feedback, I, I should be closer to I naught than before. In the earlier situation what was the case? I naught was equal to 1 over 1 plus 1 by beta. If you say the original single uh, diode and transistor current mirror, okay, you will see that I naught is going to be I, uh, I, I divided by 1 plus 1 over beta. In this particular case, you can show that I naught is going to be I I into 1 plus uh, 2 over beta divided by 1 plus 2 over beta divided by 1 by beta square, which is closer to 1 than before. Will you please work it out as a homework problem? Show that I naught over I I is this in this case, and therefore I naught is closer to I I. That means even if beta is lower, I naught is going to become close to I I in this case. That means this kind of concept can be therefore straight away used in PNP configurations where beta value is known to be lower. So, now, let us see the other uh, negative feedback concept that we can utilize. This one where we have sensed the output current and we are feeding it back as current. Now, let us see how we can sense output current and feed it back as a voltage. So, let us see. Again, this is the output current. How do you convert a current into a voltage? Put a resistor. Right. So, we put a resistor here which will convert this current output current is same as this current. So, it will convert this as a voltage okay. and then I can feed it back as a current or a voltage it does not matter. Right. So, I have sensed the this and then I am feeding it back as a current or a voltage, it does not really matter. So, this voltage is sensed, this is dependent upon the current here and this is getting converted into another current let us call it R E 1, 
this is RE2. Now this is it. Even here, okay, output impedance should go towards what? What, what is the value to which uh, output impedance should reach? Yeah, 1 by HO. HOE to 1 over HOB. Same thing, same effect happens even here. The effect that happens at this particular point is that once again you can see this is the input current, that is the output current. You can see here input current is same as collector current. This input current is going to flow through this as I, I into RE2, I, I into RE2 okay, plus V gamma is equal to what is it? I naught into R one approximately. So I can now see to it that the current ratio can be anything that I desire, right? As long as V gamma is negligibly small, I can see to it that the current ratio can be anything I desire by appropriately selecting R e one and R e two. So this is another technique of improving the performance of the current here. Okay. Only thing is this property of current ratio becoming closer to 1 is no any longer valid because I am not feeding back the total current at the output as input current. Okay. So this is not getting valid here. There is some amount of error because of all this conversion from voltage to current etc. Okay. Now there are other techniques where feedback is not at all necessary uh, for improving the performance of uh, the current mirror. Let us see. The current feedback that we have talked about is not necessary at all. Instead, let us say I drive this my means of a current. Okay. How do I do it? If I put a resistance in the emitter or if I put a current source in the emitter itself, the collector current has to be the same as emitter current. So I can put a current source at the emitter of this. So this current being fixed by the principle that we have just now studied that this can be a current error. Okay. So the fact that this is V gamma and this is V gamma and this is 0 okay, in order to make this also have V gamma here I can put a another diode here so as to force this voltage also to be collector base emitter collector base voltage to be 0. So now this is not a feedback circuit. Okay. This is reflecting a current here and this current is coming here but only thing that happens is because it is emitter is driven by a current this is nothing but a common base circuit. Because base is at a low potential AC wise compared to emitter. Emitter is being driven by means of a current. So this is straightforward common base configuration. Is this clear? How this is appearing as a common base? Because base AC wise it is at ground potential and emitter is connected to a current source. And therefore output impedance of this should be straight away 1 over HOB. There is no feedback here. Only thing is it is not necessary that I not here and I I here okay, are going to be pretty close to 1. Okay, that aspect is destroyed. Not only that in all these current mirrors Wilson current mirror and the other modified Wilson current mirror as well as this you would have noticed that I have sacrificed something. 
when I pump in a current now using the same V and R, the current in this becomes what? V minus 2 V gamma. So, by R. That is also a danger because I would like V to be much greater than 2 V gamma now instead of becoming much greater than V gamma. So, so that the current is independent of the transistor. V gamma varies with current and temperature. So, that variation I do not want it to be reflected in the current that I am generating. So, this becomes 2 here. Same is the case with Wilson current mirror. There also you have the reference current equal to V minus 2 V gamma by R. That is the only disadvantage of this. Is this clear? So, all these simple configurations of current mirrors can be uh, straight away used in biasing integrated circuits. Now, we might ask a question. How many resistors are therefore needed for biasing here? Only one resistor to convert the voltage into current. Now, the question is can you bias an IC without using resistors? That I mentioned I think in the beginning of the uh, in, uh, introductory class that there is only one configuration which will give you current straight away as a current source without using resistor that is yeah what MOSFET? Depletion. Depletion type of MOSFET or equivalently JFET. So, these are the only two configurations JFET or depletion type of MOSFET. How do you do it here? It is very simple. I just connect make the VGS equal to 0. This is a simple current source okay, where VGS is equal to 0 and the current in this is equal to ID SS and the output impedance is going to be RDS. So, here there is no need for any resistance at all. This is a configuration where you can obtain a current source with fairly reasonable high imp output impedance without using resistors and it is commonly used where you are not so much bothered about the value of the current because value of the current is dependent upon the parameter of the FET. You just want some current. Where do you have such situation? Let us say you would like to bias a Zeno diode. You want some current which is higher than the knee current. You are not bothered about what value of that current is. right? So, in such situations we go for this kind of current sources. Okay. You will see such current sources normally used in uh, biasing the Zeno diode without using resistor. Okay. So, similar uh, configuration is also valid for the JFET. Fine. So, we have so far discussed about current mirrors and how one can obtain a variety of current mirrors. There is a very nice principle in this current mirror concept that can be also written in a manner slightly differently. Let us therefore see that quickly. Let us talk only in terms of this. There is a loop here. And the Kirchhoff's voltage law says, what, what does it say? louder total voltage inside the loop should be zero. 0. So, what is it? The voltage here is let us say this is T 1 and this is T 2 okay. V B E 1 okay, is equal to V B E 2 or V B E 1 minus V B E 2 is equal to 0. 
you can put any number of such diodes all uh, let us say uh, diodes which have plus minus voltage like this will add V B E 1 plus V B E 2 V B E 3 up to V B E 1 and then another set of diodes okay, with opposing polarity let us say V B E dash 1 V B E dash 2 okay, same number let us say the total voltage should be 0 or we can just say sigma of V B E 1 I I is equal to 1 to M should be equal to sigma of what V B E J J equal to 1 to M. So, M diodes in clockwise direction getting forward bias M diodes in anti clockwise direction this is a simple thing. If these voltages sum up like this, let us look at the current. What is the current of how is it related V B E by exponent V B E by V T I E equal to I E naught. So, what is V B E for any transistor? V T log I E by I E naught. Is this point understood? Now, do you make uh, something out of this relationship? It is a beautiful relationship. What? Why is that beautiful? Because sigma of all voltages here will mean sigma of I equal to 1 to M V T log I E I by I E naught okay, equals sigma of I equal J equal to 1 to M V T log I E J by I E naught. Okay. What happens now? V T gets cancelled. And log uh, summation of log is product. Product of all currents of those diodes having voltage in clockwise direction will be equal to product of all currents flowing through those diodes which are connected in the anti clockwise direction. This is what is now becoming famous as translinear principle. Translinear principle. And a minor example of this translinear principle is the simple current theorem. What does it say? Again, product of I E I, I equal to 1 to M is equal to product of i e j j equal to 1 to m. This is the most powerful concept ever to be uh, sort of found out in integrated circuit and uh, I would say the father of this concept is a famous person in electrical engineering. Gilbert has done a lot of work. Okay. It is very simple principle and you can readily see the for the trivial case of this particular structure okay, V B E 1 minus V B E 2 is equal to 0 which means I E 1 is equal to I E 2 that is all. And exploiting this principle, we have been able to design precise multipliers, uh, logarithmic amplifiers, square routers, squares, two RMS indicators, all signal processing activity using just the bipolar transistor or MOS transistor working in the what 
what region? Pardon? Sub threshold region. This I have mentioned MOS transistor working in the sub threshold low region has current voltage relationship which is exactly similar to that of bipolar transistor. So, making use of this concept, uh, we have uh, what are called as these circuits, these signal processing circuits are nowadays becoming popular in what are called as neural networks. These are nothing but neural networks, which will simply do highly complicated nonlinear signal processing with just few devices, which otherwise require host of computers. These can be done straight away at the device level itself, the signal processing is done straight away at the device pro, uh, level itself without necessarily converting it into <coughs> digital and then using an algorithm, fast algorithm and then converting back to whatever you want. So, the neural networks make use of these basic blocks in order to realize lot of signal processing. That is what is done in the uh, human brain also. Most of the signal processing is done at the transducer level, eye, ear, skin. Signal processing is not postponed to the brain. Lot of signal processing is done at the transducer level and what is absolutely necessary to be transmitted to compare, to compare and contrast. Okay? Only that is transmitted to the brain and then uh, the information is fed back as to what to do. Otherwise, most of the signal processing activity in the brain okay, is uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, distributed all over the transducers themselves, eye, ear, skin and all that. So, the present attempt is uh, to replicate the brain in terms of First, getting some basic uh, sort of uh, performances of eye, ear, skin, nose, smell. Okay. So these things can it can this be done by the transducer itself? In which case, the transistor itself can act as a transducer. Okay, and then do the processing and decide to send the signal to the brain or not. Okay. So, we will learn more about these uh, what are called as translinear networks in the next class. What are the various uh, analog signal processing blocks that can be formulated very simply using just bipolar transistors or mass transistors working in the subthreshold region.